Hello guys, it is me, AIC Exotics, back with another video. Now, in this video, we're basically going to be focusing on our ball python, or royal python, however you want to call it, depending on where you are in the world. Now, it's just this one specific ball python, uh, not none of the others in the collection, just this one, because he is in the vivarium, in the reptile room. A lot has changed, little bits and bobs, and a lot is coming for the future for him into 2021. So if you want to find out what is happening with our snake, then come along for the video and let's see. So like I do with all of my videos, I find a video idea that I want to do a video about. And then I basically make some bullet points um, and then obviously check through them in the video, make sure I'm covering everything that I need to. So what we're going to do is basically, I don't know when this video will actually drop, it might be in 2020 or just as we get into 2021, I'll have to see, depending on a few others that we've got coming out. But basically what we're going to do is we've not actually spoke about our snake who, he still really hasn't got a name, Is he was called Spyro and then he was called Helsinki and now I just call him Snake. So um, name suggestions, drop them down below and let me know what you think. Also, we need to weigh him today as well, so I suppose we could do that on video. The weigh chart is just there, and there is also a video about the weighing chart and why we do it. So if you want to check that out, then it is on another one of my videos. Definitely worth watching, especially if you're new in the hobby as well. A lot of people already know about it, but yeah. So what we're going to do today is basically talk about why our snake was going off his food. So that is a massive issue with ball pythons. Um, as long as you know what you're doing, not saying I'm an expert, but I know enough. Um, so we're going to talk about why potentially, because you never really know, why potentially he went off his food. Um, portion sizes, which again relates to the first subject of going off his food. Um, obviously being a male as well, you don't want to sort of bulk feed or power feed like you would potentially a female if you were to breed it. So that is another factor that you've got to consider when, when they're not eating. Also, we're going to talk about weight, which again kind of corresponds to the top two and I said to you just now that we do need to weigh him on the chart up there because we are halfway through December and that is when we tend to weigh all of our animals um, and then also not strike feeding something we want to cover in this video because he weren't strike feeding where he looked hungry but if we would delay it in the vivarium he'd then go up and eat it so again there's reasons to why he'd do that there's no reason to why he wouldn't strike it there's, there's a lot behind that so yeah, that's not him being as hungry as he potentially could or should be for a meal. So again, something we want to cover. And the upgrade into 2021. We'll show you when we get into the reptile room next door. The racking system, he's got a two foot tank and then there's a little morning gecko tank there. That is going to go on to another rack. And the two foot will be extended out to a three foot. So from that, basically that is it tank upgrade which yeah which is what we've basically just said about we're going to try and make it like bioactive and obviously the log fixed permanent now i had a lot of trouble with a little uh cork buck log that he's got in there trying to put it from one end of the vivarium to the other and he's so heavy he just twists it and it falls all the time so basically we come up with a little solution how to permanently fix that in there so we'll tell you how we've done that because i think a lot of you might be interested in that as well because that will help you a lot if you want to have a permanently fixed log into your enclosure and something strong enough to hold a snake on. So other than that, let's cover all them subjects and get into the video. So guys, we are now in the reptile room. We have removed his hide, which is here, which is a nice big one. We've got the scales ready with a bowl. And all we need to do is disturb him from having a lovely sleep. And he's just shed out as well, just before Christmas. Look at them colours on him. Absolutely stunning. We just need to grab him, plop him in the bowl, and see what he weighs. Right, that was a little bit awkward to film because the camera was up here, trying to film there, and then I had to weigh him, and that bowl is way too small. Um, but I managed to do it, but he just kept coming out and falling out. I think he hit about 819, so um, yeah, 819, we'll have to record that and put him back in. And then we can get on with the rest this of is a perfect opportunity to show you us upgrading the height. So when we got him at the start of the year, well, around August, he was in this little exoterra, and then it started to lift, and then he went into that, and now he's in this big long one, and he's about to go under the unit, which we don't want. <laughs> get back here, trouble. 
How about going to your old hive? No? Going to this one? Yeah, there we go. All right, we're back. <laughs> so, um, yeah, like I said, he was in that one, and that soon started to lift. And then he went into this one, but it's a bit too flat. And this one here is much, much deeper, much more of a dome inside compared to that one there. So he's definitely been gaining a weight. He was, like I say, 749 maybe. I just weighed him and he's 819, so another good sizable jump. So we're going to put this back in. Put the probes and the thermostat back on top. There. And basically, that is his new, or newest, out of the three. That is his newest hide, and like I say, it's much more deeper. You can see the dip there, look, compared to these two, which are extremely flat. I mean, as you can see there, his body only just really gets through it. That's how thick he's starting to get now, which for a male of his age is actually quite good, but he's not too fat, he's not fat at all, and he's not overweight. So yeah, that gets get us on to food, which is the next subject of the video. So he's now going to go back into his enclosure, and like I say, we'll get on to the next topic of food, and um, his weight, because obviously we just weighed him, like I say, it was a good jump in weight, and man, do his scales look so good. Literally just shit, and look at that pattern. It looks so oily and shiny, look. You can just see it there. So yeah, he looks really good. Really nice dark tail as well. But um, yeah, he's enjoying himself. So like I say, he's going to go back in and settle down. And then we'll get on to the next subject of his feeding. And also, whilst we're actually filming him, he needs a name. So um, I've been trying to name him for like half a year now. It was Spyro, it was Helsinki. So if you guys have any name suggestions, please do feel free to drop them down below. And as I was saying about the hides, you can see much more gap going into this one compared to compared to that one and especially compared to that one because that's like a V shape that's like an overall and this one oh there he is is much kind of deeper and he fits in there perfect not that you'd be able to see but yeah if you can come up with a name for that guy I'd be greatly appreciated we'll be back up to film you in a minute don't panic. We're coming back. Okay? Okay? Yeah? He definitely wants to come out. He's like, what's going on out here? Um, we're just filming you. Is that okay? Not that it is the best lighting, but this is basically our weighing chart for some of the animals that need weighing in that room. Again, like I said, his name was Spyro. Um, and then we kind of forgot it. So yeah, and the reason that he's not filled in for the first few months of then is because um, we didn't have him. We got him from August, but anyway, he was 748, and he's now, I'm probably not going to be able to write with this hand, 819. Gee, oh, messed the G up a bit, but there we go. And that is the last one of the year for the way chart for the snake, and we've got a few others to go. And, we and not that this has got anything to do with animals, but just next to the way chart we have Rolo. And we also now have, as a new Christmas present, this really cool lava lamp, which probably looks rubbish on camera. But it's actually pretty cool. So, um, yeah, I thought I'd just show you that, because why not? But, yeah, I could watch that all day, to be honest with you. Back to the video. So, yeah, that is all done. Snake is all done for the year, weighing wise, and as you can see, he's jumped massively, done really well. Same with um, Rolo, who is a crested gecko in this tank here. No clue where he actually is, and he's also loving his hammock as well. And then we've got to do Gus, which is the leopard tortoise, and Fredo, the Pac-Man frog. Other than that, that is the ones in that room that would need to be done for the rest of this year to see it out, and then we'll start with 2021. So now, the next subject is his food and his size portions. Now, when we got him, he was on large rat wieners, um, and then from there he went on to medium rats, and believe it or not, yes, this is bought as a medium rat, and as you can tell, it definitely isn't. Well, in my opinion, it definitely isn't a medium rat. 
Um, but yeah, so he went on from large rat wieners, and then he jumped to these, and I've just felt like they're a bit too thick for him, too big. Now, this here is a large multi. Now, don't get me wrong, this is obviously much smaller than this. But you hear it all the time in the hobby and it's getting more and more common to use African soft furs purely because they're a lot, uh, lot, <laughs> a lot more smaller and they contain the same amount of content than this will but without all the bad fatty stuff that this contains. So and obviously this here, a chick, which obviously is good now and again on occasions but not as a main staple diet, doesn't really contain anything good for the snake. But if they are not eaten or you just want to give them a little treat like Christmas for example, then they can have a chick. So basically instead of going back down from this size rat to a large rat wiener, I thought why not try him on the multis to see if he'd take to one of them. And yeah, now he's taken these, but apparently once you get him on the multis you can't really get him off. Which is true in a lot of ways, so he might just feed him on these, but maybe more regularly than these. Um... But like I say, at the minute, that is basically what he was on. He was on large rat wieners. Then he went to these guys. Now he's jumped down to these. I say jumped down because obviously they weigh less. But goodness wise, this could, should contain just as much, if not more. And then, um, like I say, every sort of fortnight, or well, not every fortnight, every kind of four weeks, I tend to give him a chick. Just because, why not? So yeah, that is his main staple of diet. Like I say, I don't reckon he'll go back on to standard rats now. It will mostly be African soft furs. But other than that, he seems to enjoy them. And as you can see, this reptile room is quite hot. So really, I should get a move on because I don't want him to start smelling them out. So I'm now back in the other room. Wash my hands and shut the snake away. So basically, we'll be going back in there in a little minute to see about the log and the size of the tank and the upgrade, etc. But basically, what we've covered on the little bullet point list so far is going off his food. So basically, the reason for that was potentially, I think, due to just cold weather, winter coming in, they often do do that. Um, and it's not something you need to worry about at all because he was never losing weight on the weigh chart there. Every single month, he was still gaining. So unless you actually see consistent weight or, the, or lower, like dropping weight, losing weight, then that's something you need to be concerned about. But other than that, there's loads of other videos on YouTube about this in much, much more detail. This is just a little bullet point in this specific video, but like I say, it can be covered in a much sort of wider view. So yeah, going off food, I think it was just um, also too much as well. It was when we first got him feeding weekly, and I think it's got to the point now where he doesn't need a feed every week. Um, so you can do it sort of every 14 days, or, I mean, all snakes are different. It depends when you see fit kind of thing. You know when your snake is hungry, when they're active, and when they're on a prowl for food. But yeah, I think from every seven days, it was just too much. So every seven days, is cut down to every 14. And obviously, instead of going from the rats, he's now on smaller weight African soft furs. But obviously, every two weeks. So again, you might be confused here. So it's smaller weight, but better quality food as in you know goodness but not weighing as much as what a normal rat would because that is not 100% goodness if that rat weighed I don't know 5 grams that's not all goodness there is a multi could weigh 3 but it could be 100% goodness so you sort of have to comp compensate for better food quality instead of quantity as such so yeah that is going off food again that kind of corresponds with the other point of portion sizes so instead of every week, it is every fortnight. And instead of a bigger meal, it is smaller meals to make up for it. So again, portion sizes, you need to make sure it's not too big. I know the rule of thumb or the old fashioned rule of thumb is uh, the biggest part of the snake's body. That kind of thickness needs to be that. Yeah, that is true in some sense, but snakes sometimes, or especially raw pythons or ball pythons have quite a little head compared to the thickest part of their body and that rat dangling in front of them is quite intimidating because that is actually similar if not a bit bigger than their head which depends on your snake again like we said but that can be quite intimidating and it can be quite off-putting there is a little multi has a much smaller head 
I could be less intimidating for your snake to stroke feed for. So that is that. Now obviously the tank upgrade, what we're going to do is go in there and basically talk about that along with the log. And the new hide, like I said, we mentioned the new hide, he's had three this year. So I don't like to just get one big one, stick him in it and leave a lot of excess room for him. Because you know ball pythons, they like feeling compact, tight and snug. And I feel like with a big hide going in that and having a lot of excess room, he won't like. So I've just been upgrading them. And then other hides will be used for other things or I can sell them, it's not a big deal. So yeah, we've probably spent a little bit of money on hides for him this year, but it doesn't matter. So, and we'll do the same again when that one gets too big, we'll just upgrade it. Because I like looking in the hide and seeing that he's nice and compact around it and like filled out. So yeah, that is another thing, make sure they feel nice and secure in their environment. It's nice and dark, you know, the, the hole is quite small, not a big opening. Doesn't let a lot of light in, stuff like that. Um, and they should be fine. So before we go into the other room again and talk about the upgrade and obviously what we're going to be doing next year for his enclosure, just about the stroke feeding, like I said previous, it is mostly to do with the size of the actual prey item's head compared to your snake. It is a lot smaller, so if you are having that problem, you can try the moles, like I said. But again, there's much more in-depth videos on YouTube about this with much more detail as well. So definitely go in, look at them and you know do your research on it because it is a very much talked about subject in snake keeping. So yeah, make sure you go and do that. So now what we're going to do is go into the other room and look at his log, which we've permanently fixed against either side of the wall. So it's nice and solid and he can hold all of his weight and wrap around it. So as far as we talk about his log... If we come down here, yeah, you can just see his head in that cave there. Take our lock out, which is extremely important. And we won't disturb him too much. We'll go this side he's not at. So yeah, what we've done with his log, it used to be in that top corner there, going across the tank diagonally into that bottom corner. Now, the problems that that posed were when he used to put his weight onto it, it used to twist and that then used to fall and if we wanted to get his hide off to get him out we wouldn't be able to because the log would be going di like diagonally across it so it would stop us from doing it so now what we've done is we basically measured the log we cut a clean flush end off so it's nice and smooth so basically like this nice smooth clean surface to cut from then the same to that end there as well and basically from one side of the tank, you can only just see it through there, you might not be able to, that little that little screw sticking out. We just drilled through really slowly into here to secure that. And we didn't tighten it all the way. Done the same to this side here. That little screw hole just there. Tightened either side accordingly, kept doing it until it was secure. Made sure that it didn't twist, which it doesn't. You can put quite a lot of weight on it so when he goes up here, it won't twist off. And now, one, it's off the floor so it creates more space for him. And two, it's nice and high off the ground and goes lower. So it gives him a lot more levels because a lot of people say ball pythons don't climb. He is on this every single night without fail. Even if it's for a second, he's always on it. So yeah, make sure you add a lot of height to your enclosure if now, possible. to close the video out, basically what we've done with every single animal we've covered towards the end of the year, we've talked about their 2021 upgrades. So this racking system, as you can see here, the Lion Day Gecko video obviously will be out shortly about them two up there. But yeah, so this is a two foot. And as you can see, he's growing at a good rate. So what we're going to do is extend this from here not extend this, just buy another one, but you know what I mean, extend this setup from here all the way across this rack and remove this. Now this is the semi-bioactive morning gecko tank. Not that you can see them in there at the minute, but there's one down there, but the camera won't be able to pick it up. So yeah, what we're gonna do, extend this tank from a two foot to a three foot, bring it all the way out. Then we'll have a spare two foot, so potentially something like a western hog nose maybe. So we can extend this all the way out and we can take all of the symmetric heat emitter off and just reinstall it into the new tank. Same with the log, so we don't have to sort of buy no extra products and the same with the light as well. Everything can come off and be stripped back onto the new tank. 
So that will be going from there to there. So coming back, looking at the rack like this, instead of having that little tank there, it will be all the way across to the end. And then this morning gecko enclosure will go from here up onto here. This is basically just the plants that we are growing for our leopard tortoise because it is winter in the UK, it is cold, it is freezing and nothing grows. So yeah, they'll be gone in due course. That will be going on the wall, which is really cool. And we've just got some snake shed, nice little mug and a little ornament. So yeah, that'll all be going. That will be going on there with the light as well. And then the snake in 2021 will have a nice long three foot enclosure. But we still need a name for him, so names, names, names. So other than that guys, that is basically our snake update for the, there we go. That is our snake update for the end of the 2020 year. And obviously going on to 2021, we now know what to expect with him, what food he's eating, um, his enclosure size, bits and bobs like that, I'd like to say bullet points on here are all covered going off food, portion sizes, weight, not strike feeding, new hide 2 foot to a 3 foot in 2021 tank upgrade and log fixed permanent so that is basically everything that people asked to see and sort of questioned what was happening so now you all know that is his upgrade and sort of update for the year until now the new year and hopefully now the new tank as well but other than that, like I said in the previous clip, we still need a name. So please, any name suggestions that I like down below, I think I'm just going to go with now because he needs a name. He hasn't had a name properly ever, so yeah, he needs a name. So let's get a name for him, hopefully before the new year, depending on when this video goes out. So yeah, other than that, thank you guys for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and see a lot more from us in 2021. Thanks for watching.